Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. It's great to be back alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And as you're listening to us today, maybe you're in Missouri, maybe you're in Michigan. We welcome you to the program. We're going to be telling you how you can get up close and personal with financial educators and instructors just like Kirk and Paul. They hold courses that are designed to allow you to go deep into retirement topics, the very topics we discuss right here on the show, but in a much larger, longer format. We're going to tell you how to attend, how you can get registered and reserve your seat. That is coming up. We have a tremendous show for you today. I'm really excited, Kirk and Paul, to dive into this topic. We're discussing today women in retirement and why it matters to men, too. So this is something for the entire audience. We want our female listeners and our male listeners both paying close attention because, boy, this is a topic that doesn't get a lot of notice, and it needs to. There's a lot on the line here for both parties, isn't there? There is, Megan. And as, we're, as you said, the, the title of the topic, and I'm thinking about the show today and the amount of people who are listening to us on podcasts around the country, the one thing I, I would remind people as you're listening to our show, what we're trying to do is take an eight-hour course that we're teaching at most of the universities around, the, uh, around uh, Michigan and Missouri, and we're, we're trying to, to break that eight-hour course down into these eight-minute segments every week and, and, and blend in current events and current issues into how to approach retirement planning. And so one of the things we're seeing with the baby boomer generation is that there's, there's just some really disturbing statistics around the impact of women in retirement, for, particularly for baby boomers, where we have traditionally seen men when we're married sort of the head of the household when it comes to the financial aspects. And men are leaving women in a very, very vulnerable position when they're passing away. Statistically, uh, they tell us men will pass. We know men typically pass before women. We don't know when they're going to pass. Unfortunately, we're seeing people pass in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're leaving me- women in a very vulnerable position economically, from an abuse perspective, from a financial literacy perspective, from a tax perspective. There's so many issues that we think we, need to, we needed to discuss in this show, Paul. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what I love about this show is because, first of all, we've talked about it at different times, never, you know, have never concentrated on one whole show. What I love about it is, you know, Obviously, part of our goal here is to, to get people educated. And I don't know that there's a better topic than this with regard to education, the importance of getting educated in particular around women in retirement and men and their husbands and why they need to come as well. I, I really think this topic lends itself to the importance of education and knowledge as much as anything we've ever talked about. So I, I'm really excited about the show. Paul, as we've taught, I mean, thousands and thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people as these classes, we've been teaching these classes at major universities for, I think we're going on 12 years now. What I've noticed, I have noticed as we focus more time helping educate baby boomers about challenges in retirement, we're seeing more and more both the husband and the wives coming and attending the courses. And I, and I'm, and I love that. And we need to promote that. And but still, we still it is not equal. We're seeing far more men attending these courses than women, and we need women, single women, widowed women, and married women to participate in this education because you are likely going to survive if you are married your spouse, and you're going to and you're and unfortunately the men you men are going to make a lot of mistakes putting them in a very vulnerable position which we're going to talk about today. So please attend one of our eight hour courses. These courses are taught in two evenings or one full Saturday. They're a 200 page textbook. This is a master's levels course. This is really advanced, deep dive, walking you through how to build a retirement plan. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, we're going to talk and get into this, but as we're going to talk about, there are a lot of, lot of things that expose women in particular 
to vulnerabilities in retirement. And the one thing I saw as, as, as we were preparing for this, is there's a lot of research out there that shows and connects the importance of financial literacy, financial education for women in particular and their ability to, to make better financial decisions later in life, to help them be less vulnerable to abuse, to help them feel more comfortable engaging in the financial service industry, and ultimately to help them feel better prepared. And when they're not educated, when they're not getting the financial literacy, and we're going to talk about it, all the things that leave them vulnerable to and ultimately much less prepared in retirement. And we know because they live longer than us, they're going to be living, many women are going to live way, well past their husbands. So they Paul, need to be better prepared. Paul, so just really quick bullets. They're going to live longer. They're going to have less income, and most most that are listening to our show, right? We know the demographics that are listening to our show. Most of you have one to ten million dollars of retirement investable assets. Most of those surviving women will have less income when the first spouse dies, when the husband dies, and they're going to pay more taxes because you y'all didn't plan properly. You're more likely to be a victim of elder abuse if you're a woman. Statistically speaking, significantly more likely. You're more likely not to seek out the right help because you don't know what help to get because you did not pay attention and get the financial literacy when you had the cognitive abilities to retain, follow, and prepare. Some of it's the the husband's fault because they just, hey, I'm responsible. I got it. Let me take care of it. There's also some responsibility on on the woman's side where sometimes finances can be intimidating. The financial service industry is certainly intimidating and (laughs) doesn't leave everyone uh, feeling comfortable trusting them for good reason. They're also the sandwich uh, generation, so they're the most likely, by the way, to be responsible for the caregiving of their parents. And they're not in the caregiving of the ill the husband. So things stack up against the the woman it, it, for baby boomers, and no one's really talking about this on a national level. So we are going to talk about it. We're going to help fix this problem. We talk about this along with how do I build the most effective retirement plan in our eight-hour courses. If you'd like to register for one of our eight-hour courses taught at major universities and also streamed live from the universities, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's much more straight ahead on the program with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler coming up next. We're glad you're with us today for the Retirement Education Hour. Great topic today. We're talking about women in retirement. Boy, there's a lot to know on this topic. And it doesn't just affect women. It affects men, too. So we hope everyone's listening today to everything that Kirk and Paul are telling us on this topic. It is a big one, and we're going to get back to that in just a moment. I want to make sure you know, though, that you can go back and listen to this very show. You can share it with a friend. You can look at many others in our library of shows. Anywhere you find your podcast. That's right. We offer these in podcast form. Just find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour and you can see that full list there. And we want to welcome you if you're just joining us now, if you're listening from the state of Missouri or the state of Michigan, we want to say hello and glad you're with us and remind you that the Retirement Education Foundation has courses designed just for you at major universities in your state, at colleges and universities. We want you to attend these courses, and you can do so by reaching out via the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And a note on there, these courses fill up very quickly. They're very popular. We want you to make sure you reserve a seat at a location and a date that works best for you. If you're in the state of Michigan, keep in mind these are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University as well. If you're in Missouri, many colleges and universities have these courses for you there as well. You can also call to register at 800 240 Eighty-nine, eighty-one. Kirk and Paul, going back to our topic at hand, women in retirement, you said that there are many, many issues facing women in retirement that can cause some hiccups. Tell us what some of those are. 
Well, so a couple things. First, I want to make sure everyone understands that the Retirement Education Foundation is a national charity, and it's designed to promote and provide advanced retirement literacy. So these courses are most master's level courses. And so one of the things that we, after teaching for over 12 years, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people now, consistently we are seeing, and I, and I want to pick on men because it's not just the men's fault, but the baby boomer generation, particularly the men are leaving their surviving spouses in a very vulnerable, difficult position. They don't know they're doing it. They're not doing intentional. And by the way, I don't want to leave the women off the hook either here. Again, we're a charity. We're going to tell you how it is. And you have some personal accountability. You need to educate yourself. You need to understand Not it's not just enough to say, okay, honey, you take care of the finances. You need to understand what the plan for retirement looks like, how much money we're going to spend, when we're going to spend it, from which accounts, what happens if one spouse dies, what happens if the other spouse dies, when I'm supposed to do things, that I have all the documents I needed if someone gets sick, that we have all of the plans in place to pass the money to the next generation effectively, and how to and we'll talk about this later, but how to minimize the chances of elder abuse because it's rampant. 36% of people are going to become victims of financial elder abuse in retirement, and most of them tend to be women. And it's because women live longer. In fact, 80% of women die single. Men are, and women are less likely to remarry. So at some point, this is going to fall on you if it's not already, you're not already single or already widowed and you're taking care of this. So you have to educate yourself, Paul. We keep talking about education. That's why it's a master's level course. It's eight hours. It's 200 page textbook. It is comprehensive for a reason, Paul. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, we talk about living longer, right? It's a double-edged sword, right? You know, as a man, I'm always envious, right? It's why, why is it that we die so much earlier, right? But the one downside of living longer is you have to prepare longer, right? You need to make sure that you have a plan that accounts for living often into your 90s, right? And the challenge is, is that, is that often, you know, men are the ones who, who typically are overseeing the finances. Often men are the one, you know, men are the ones who are getting the financial literacy and there's not enough and, and men often think they know it all, sorry to say. They so are often, overconfident. Uh, overconfident. <laughs> so often men think, I don't need education. I don't need a plan. I got it. What you're not thinking about is most likely you're going to die first. And what about your wife? What's going to happen to her? And, and, you know, you live well into your 90s. You better plan financially into your 90s, right? And there's a lot of things you have to plan for that we talk about in the class. And, and I think that's something that men often aren't thinking about. Paul, statistically speaking, if you're a married couple, you have a 50% chance that one of you will live into your 90s. There's a 40% chance that one of you will live until 94 years old. That is today. By the way, if you are 65 years old today, you have over 50% chance of living into your 90s. So, so no, and women live longer. So they're the likely surviving spouse. Now, here's the part. Men particularly are overconfident in how long they're going to live. Like women are better planners. It's just, that's the fact. That's our experience. When, when they come to the class, they are more open-minded to learn and hear and retain the information. Uh, you know, we're coming out of the best 10 year run in the market history. And often men think it's their finances are in such good order because they're great stock pickers, market timers, they're great planners and they're good with finance. And that, that isn't the case. I'm telling you, retirement planning is totally different than anything you guys have been exposed to. And there are so many things you are not prepared. There's so many more levers. There's so many more challenges. Women tend to be more responsive and, and retain better in these classes. And men think they're going to live forever. <laughs> they don't recognize that some of you are going to die in your 60s. More of you are going to die in your 70s. Most of you are going to die in your 80s. And the wife is still going to be alive. And you are living, leaving them, especially if you die in your 60s and 70s, in such a vulnerable position, it's sad. And here's the takeaway. Listen to this show and listen to, come to the classes. You, the takeaway is you plan for the worst. 
you hope for the best. And the best is you leave more money to the kids. The worst is you, you end up becoming dependent on the kids or the government because you haven't planned properly and you didn't assume the worst things could happen. We have the data. We know your spending patterns. We know how to maximize your income. We know how to protect the surviving spouse. But to learn how to do this, and by the way, I am talking to that $1 to $10 million uh, uh, families. That's what we're talking to. That's the people who have the greatest opportunity to really minimize taxes, maximize income, protect the family, the spouse. You got the greatest flexibility to do advanced planning. And that's what we're going to teach in these eight-hour courses at most of the major universities that we also stream live so it's convenient. You have no excuses. All you got to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. There's plenty more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're joining us today. And of course, Kirk and Paul, they're with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we want to make sure that you're signed up for these retirement courses we've been telling you about. These are held at major universities, major colleges, both in the state of Michigan and the state of Missouri. So no matter where you're listening today, you can take advantage of these master's level courses. They are truly like master's level courses on retirement planning, which is so necessary here for a successful modern retirement. You don't want to leave anything to chance. You really need this deep download of information, and you can really only get it when you attend these courses. Here's how you can sign up. Here's how you can reserve your seat today. Go to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. If you're listening today in the state of Missouri, many colleges and universities, they hold these courses right there on campus. You can attend if you're in the state of Michigan. Keep in mind, these are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. So take advantage today. You can call or go to the website. Again, that phone number is 800-240-8981. We're going to get back to our show topic in just a moment. want you to keep in mind, you can re-listen to this program. You can share it with a friend or listen to previous episodes Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. I want to talk about overconfidence as we're discussing our topic of the day, which is women in retirement and why this topic is so big for both men and women. But where does overconfidence come in? How does this play into this? So, Megan, and I've said this multiple times this particular show because I think this topic, I, I, I need to shake both the men and women to hear us, okay? Teaching this class to tens of thousands of people and then in our private practices, being responsible for over $2 billion, over a thousand families, only families that are between the ages of 50 and 102 years old. We have the data. We know what you're doing or not doing. And we also know who is listening to our shows. We've been doing radio for a very, very long time and we have the demographics. We know the people who are attending our classes and listening to our radio shows tend to be highly educated. Most have at least a bachelor's degree in college. They tend to be professionals, a lot of executives. We have Fortune 500 CEOs and CFOs that are attending our classes in our private practices. We know that we have highly educated, very successful people that are listening and attending the classes and listening to the show and watching the TV shows too. We also know that the data tells us that studies have found 55% of women are less. Uh, 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 um, let me restate this, Paul. Give me, I'm going to have, because you, you did the research. Give me the statistic of the, how much more overconfident men are versus women, but how similar in terms of competency of the financial literacy they are. Yeah, and it's, it's just, a, it's it, remarkable to me. Yeah, I mean, it's, not, it's actually not that surprising when you think about it, but basically this was a study that asked both men and women, you know, how much do you know compared to the average investor related to financial literacy? Not surprising, not surprising, right? Men said they know more than they actually know. 
women said they know less than they actually know. So 55% of the women stated they know less financially. They know less than the average investor versus 27% of the men. And it turns out they both, in terms of their knowledge, they both knew about the same. It's just men are overly confident, women are underconfident. And that plays into a lot of the decisions that get made in terms of financial planning. So, Paul, I propose over the next couple of segments, I want people to listen because we are, are we get to witness very irresponsible, often driven by ego or overconfident decisions men make. And so what I'd like to do is you and I discuss some of the things that we've witnessed. And in, in maybe we don't go into the whole story. Maybe we can go into one or two stories, but more examples of where we see it and then point out why they're mistakes. I, I, I know one, I'm going to do one. I'm going to talk about taxes, taxes in general about retirement planning. None of you know anything about what you're doing. Even you CPAs, I promise you, you have not done a 30 year tax projection to see what your effective tax rates are going to be in your seventies and eighties to compare it versus to what it's in your sixties. So you can decide where you should be taking your money from now and whether you should be Roth converting, whether you should be taking your pension or your lump sums, when you should be taking your Social Security, when you should be recognizing your capital gains. You aren't doing any of that. Even the CPAs who are experts in taxation aren't doing it related to tax planning. That's one of the things we teach in the class. That's one of the things we have to address. The thing that impacts women, though, around taxes is men not recognizing, if they're doing the planning, not recognizing that when one spouse predeceases the other spouse, that surviving spouse will have less income because they're going to lose one of the Social Securities. They might lose some of your uh, pension benefits, depending on how you had it situated. They're going to end up having less money, but they're going to go from a married filing joint status to a single tax status. So taxes are going to go way up and the women, the surviving spouse, if it's male or female, are going to be forced to take all of those taxable RMDs in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. So taxes way up, income down, <laughs> right? And because you go from married filing joint to single, Medicare means testing also is cut in half. So that means for most of our listeners that are attending our show, classes and listening to our shows because of your net worth, their Medicare costs are going to go way up too. This is all avoidable if you plan today for what's going to happen in the future and you actually know the math and the numbers and you educate yourself and you plan for the next 25 years. Income plan, tax plan for 25 years. It's not just investing. It is much more comprehensive when it applies to retirement, especially when it comes to men and women and surviving spouses, Paul. Yeah, I mean, there, we could talk about Social Security. We could talk about, you know, how do you elect your pension benefits? We could talk about, there's so many things, mistakes that are being made that ultimately hurt the surviving spouse, which is usually the wife. All of these things can be avoided, but it starts with getting educated, right? It starts with having some knowledge, understanding the things you need to do to prepare. And that gets to our class. Let's make sure we go into some of those other things in the next segment, Paul. I know I, I sort of dominated around taxes because it's such a hot topic, but it's where we see the greatest mistakes around retirement planning. There's so many things that, avo that are avoidable for both of you and then the surviving spouse. But you need to attend one of our eight-hour courses that are taught at just about all the major universities in your area. It's eight hours, two evenings, or one full Saturday. 200-page textbook, master's level. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return with Kirk and Paul right after this. And we're back. Great show today as we're focused on women in retirement and why that actually matters to men as well. This is a really important topic. We're glad you're tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. We have been telling you about the foundation's courses. These are like master's level courses almost on retirement planning, and we want you in attendance in the front row so you can get this download. 
of information you need to have a successful retirement. No matter where you're listening today, we have locations for you at major universities and colleges in your area. If you're listening today from Michigan, these are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University in Missouri. Many colleges and many universities make these courses available to you as well. Here's how you find out more and how you can register. Go to the website. It's Retirement Planning edu.org. That's retirement planning, edu.org. You can also call to get registered. That phone number is 800-240-8981. Again, it's 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, this program, you can find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Now, Kirk and Paul, earlier in the program, you were telling us about some examples of, you know, instances where you see a spouse, you see a husband in particular, making some decisions in retirement planning that really negatively affect their their wife who will remain after they pass. Can you give us some more particulars on those? What's really troubling? So here it is. I mean, look. It's so particularly if you're if you've been listening to us for a while, I'm assuming you've then eventually have finally attended one of our courses. And what you've recognized is that it, there is the day to plan for retirement is now. The play, time to get the advanced help you need is now. It's not in 10 years, not in five years. Folks, it is not what you invest in that's going to drive your success and your performance in retirement. I know you don't hear this regularly. I'm sure this is new to you. I'm sure you think it's what you're investing in that's going to drive your performance. It's not. And if you don't understand that, the podcast, Megan mentioned podcast. If you're a new listener, go back and listen to some of the shows so you can better understand the mistakes you're making. We see this, these mistakes consistently in our private practice and in our classes that we've taught tens of thousands of people. We've been doing this a long time. The mistakes are consistent for that one to $10 million, highly successful, highly educated do-it-yourselfers. Consistently, you guys are doing cost-benefit analysis on whether or not you should take 100% survivor benefits, 50%, 66 and two-thirds, take a lump sum, and you're making the wrong decisions. I promise you consistently, you're making the wrong decisions for you and especially your surviving spouse. Remember, when you die, The surviving spouse is going to get less income because one of the social securities is going to go away and their taxes are going to go up. So this is a tax question. This is a 25-year income planning. It's all dependent on the different types of assets you have. Consistently, the men are making the wrong choices about their pensions. They're consistently, 96% of you make the wrong decision with social security. Because you're depending on online calculators and reading silly articles that the financial service industry pumps out there to make oversimplify things that aren't simple. You are not an average retiree. If you have greater than a half a million dollars, you're not close to average. The average baby boomer retires with $250,000 saved. So all the the strategies, all the articles, all the planning, all the software is designed for that average baby boomer with $250,000 saved for retirement, not that one to 10 million. You are making mistakes with social security. You're making mistakes with taxes. You're making mistakes with your pensions. When there's an age gap, you're making mistakes by overspending or not buying some sort of life insurance to protect the younger spouse so that you can spend more aggressively when you're younger. We're seeing men particularly selfish, overconfident in their ability to invest and drive performance, leaving surviving spouses with nothing consistently. Paul, I know you you see it every day in the in your in, in our private practice that wives looking at you in meetings just begging you to like Knock the man over their head. You're not as good as you are. think you are. You're making mistakes, and the wives are scared out of their mind. And they're afraid to say something. Yeah, we see it all the time. I mean, it, it, it always lands on the do-it-yourselfer, doesn't it? It does. You know, it, you know, here's one thing. No one ever thinks they will be victimized, right? We are, none of us ever think we're going to be a victim of abuse, right? Whether you're a man or a woman, we, we don't, we, we go around, we don't, we can't, we don't want to think that we're going to ever be the victim. Kirk, you and I know somebody 
and and I, I know we've talked about this, but we know some outside we know some, of our some, business. Yeah, we know someone personally. And here's the crazy thing about this: that I situation. know multiple people. But this person was left with a lot of money. She was obviously uh, she was hugely victimized, lost it all in a fraud case. Here's the thing: he left her a lot of money, but I'll tell you what: he didn't leave her. Right? He was a do-it-yourselfer. He didn't leave <laughs> her with a the plan. He was a CPA. He was a CPA. He, that's right. He thought he, so. He left her with a lot of money, but no, but no one she, no advisor that she trusted, no plan that she knew what to follow. She had all, all this money, and she had no I, smart woman had no idea how to move forward. And wasn't gonna. She wasn't at that point in her life gonna hire an advisor. Most women Paul, don't at that point. Paul, she had a master's degree. She's know, highly she, educated. She's smart, he just, smart woman. He had a very dominant personality. He took care right. of the finances. Like he many. He died at a relatively young age and did That's not right. prepare her and made all kinds of do-it-yourself mistakes. And, and how much did she lose? She lost millions, Paul, to Million? financial elder abuse. That's right. No one thinks uh, it's, you guys don't think it's going to be you. It, it, <laughs> what, no what's the statistic, Kirk? It's 36% of people, baby boomers over the age of 70, become victims of financial elder abuse. And oh, by the way, the majority of them Women. are the surviving spouse that are yeah, victims. Two-thirds. 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 Yeah. Two-thirds are women, and it's usually of the surviving spouse. So we're just touching the surface of the mistakes you guys are making for yourselves together, w w the mistakes that women make when they're single, and the mistakes that men are causing for women who end up surviving them. Across the board, you guys are underprepared, all we're asking you to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you highly educated people, I promise you, this is, uh, we promise you, you will walk away with a very different perspective on retirement. You'll be able to spend more, pay less taxes, leave the surviving spouse in a better position and have a much better retirement if you invest the eight hours of education this takes. So if you'd like to register for one of these courses that are taught at most of the major universities, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back here on the program in just a moment. We're glad you're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we've been talking about just a really big topic today, one that probably doesn't get enough attention, the attention it deserves, and that is women and retirement. And you might think, well, this is just a singular issue, but Kirk and Paul, you're making the case that this issue affects all of us, men and women, and it really has a big impact on men as well. Uh, and I'm learning a ton. And I'll tell you, the other place where you can learn a lot about these types of issues is at the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are almost like master's level courses on retirement planning where they tackle big issues like this one and many, many other affecting you in a modern retirement and we want you to be there to get this download. If you're listening today in the state of Michigan, these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or the Troy campus and Oakland University. If you're in the state of Missouri listening today, hello and welcome to you. Keep in mind that these courses are taught at many colleges and universities in your community and you can find out more and get registered simply by going to the website, which is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also pick up the phone and register that way. Here's the phone number. It's 800-240-8981. Again, it's 800-240-8981. And if you're interested in listening to this show or many of our other episodes, you're welcome to go wherever you find your favorite podcasts and you can find this very show. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, I want to go back to, it's a hard subject, it's a delicate one, but that's the subject of elder abuse. Give us some insight into this. What should we be looking for? What should we be aware of? And how do we prevent it? I want to focus on those people who are do-it-yourselfers. While they tend to be more men than women, anyone who's a do-it-yourselfer. Again, we know who's listening. We know we have many of you either doing it yourself or you've got a broker that kind of helps you out in terms of picking investments. No, no, 
when we say do it yourself, we're talking about mapping out your retirement plan, mapping out how much income I can take from which accounts, at what age, what taxes I'm going to pay, how do I minimize those taxes, and how do I protect my surviving spouse? Now, you folks that don't really have a comprehensive retirement plan with the right type of people helping you, you're right, the right team, CPA attorney and advisors who are working together, if you don't have that team, here's, here is the statistic that is shocking that people just refuse to think it's going to happen to them. 36% of people over the age of 70 are victims of financial elder abuse. Last year, it was $36 billion lost to financial elder abuse. That is an average of $43,000 per every person over the age of 70 in the U.S. So it's big dollars. It's a significant percentage. It's over a third of you are going to be victims. And here's the most shocking of them all, because everyone says it won't happen to me because I have children, I have family that will take care of, of things to make sure that me or my spouse aren't victims of elder abuse. Well, unfortunately, 60% of all fi uh, financial elder abuse is being perpetrated. In other words, it's being done by your friends and family. That is who are taking advantage of these elderly people with from financial elder abuse it's over 60 percent is friends and family hear me when i say this it's simple in your children's marriage who's responsible for the finances is it your child or the son-in-law or daughter-in-law do they pass away does something the 36 of you are going to be victims and you want to increase the odds of it being you is not having a team in place and not having a plan built when you're in your 50s and 60s to make sure there's a guide for that surviving spouse to follow if something happens to you so that they know what they should be doing. It was built before you died when you were both cognitively healthy and strong. Paul, this is a big deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. It's, you know, and you're the psychologist. You know this better than most, right? I mean, you did this. I, I, and it's becoming... This is not going to you know, go down in, in terms of concerns. This issue is only going to get harder and harder because we're living in a more complex world, right? We're all bombarded by situations where we could easily become victims of abuse and neglect. And, and as you age, you're only going to be more vulnerable. I, I, I had read the medium age of an elder victim is 78 years old, right? When you're in your 70s, you get to, to that age, cognitively things start changing. You're not as sharp. You're, you're more vulnerable. You know, you're, you're, you're more easily prey, right? And, and abuse isn't, you know, I always worry when we talk about this topic, it sort of turns people away because people think of abuse. They think of really, you know, physical abuse. Abuse can be neglect, right? It's not, it's not necessarily somebody stealing your money. It's also neglect. And as we age and cognitively we're not as sharp, things start declining. We're more vulnerable. And again, because women live longer, it's often the women who are victims of these types of scenarios. And, and it all can be prevented. That's what's frustrating. All of this can be prevented if you plan for these things. If you, you know, build a plan that your surviving spouse can follow, that's a huge benefit to them in, in preventing them from being abused or negle neglected financially. Paul, I'll give you two really quick examples that just recently happened in our private practice that we, we caught early. So they didn't lose as much. The first one was uh, an elderly woman who, long story short, pulled $16,000 of cash out of her bank account. Um, the perpetrators of the, of the, the abuse came to the, her house. She's a single elderly woman to pick up the cash, right? And they tried to do again. We, she had a team. We caught it. We've protected the house. We've protected her. We got the authorities involved. So fortunately, it was 16000 Another one, uh, in her late 70s, we're thinking, cognitively, things got confusing. Uh, she might have been 80. She might have just turned 80. She was getting confused. And she was, every time a charity sent a request for a donation, she thought it was a bill, and she was paying it. Now, because she had a team to trust to watch outflows, what was going on with money, we caught it early. We caught it early enough, and it was you know thousands of dollars, but a lot better I, I, than what it could have been. A lot better. I got another one. Well, maybe we'll tell the story in the next segment about the 
the the eighty year old who's a big developer who's in court fighting with his children because he thinks he won the Jamaican lotteries two hundred fifty thousand dollars into that scam. It is all over the place. It's prevalent, and the surviving spouse, particularly women, are most likely to be victimized. Attend one of our eight hour courses. It's master's level courses held at most of the universities in your area. All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org to register for one of these classes. And we'll return with Kirk and Paul right after this. We're glad you've joined us today for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we want you to sign up for the Foundation's courses on retirement planning. These are almost like master's level courses on this topic. And it goes deep, it goes into a lot of the specifics so that you are armed with the information and the knowledge you need to have the retirement you envision, the one you dream about. It does take planning and it takes information. And that information is taught at major universities, both in the state of Michigan and the state of Missouri. So if you're listening today from the state of Michigan, these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. In the state of Missouri, we've got a lot of great options for you, different locations at major colleges and universities for you. You can find out those locations by going to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And you can also call to reserve your seat. Simply call 800-240-8981. And you're welcome to re-listen to this show. And it's been a great one. We're talking today about women in retirement, how it, it does affect women, but it also affects men. You can listen again wherever you find your favorite podcasts. We've got a library of our shows. You can share those with a friend as well. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, I want to get back to our topic, which has been great. I've learned so much. As a woman, I'm deeply invested in this topic today. I want to talk, though, about some solutions to prevent some of the mistakes that you've shared with us today. So, Megan, as we jump into this, and we'll give you we're the secret sauce. It's, it's the secret sauce. We're going to give you the answer to this problem. <laughs> and just remember, the charity also is streaming these classes. I think it's important people know, no matter where you're listening to us, we are also streaming these classes. The charity streams it live while we're teaching it from the universities. Now, strongly encourage you to attend in person. It's a very different experience. It moves fast and really comprehensive, but it is available to stream wherever you're at. So now, I, rem I wanna make sure I conclu conclude on our last segment where we were talking about some examples of elder abuse that we've recently witnessed. One that we recently witnessed from an attendee at a class who was in his early 80s, married, major developer, super high net worth, he can tell you every building he built. He can tell you how much it's currently cash flowing, how many years he's depreciated it. He's got the math. But he also thinks he's won the Jamaican lottery. And he's $250,000 into the Jamaican lottery scheme. And it's his children that are in court fighting dad to get control of the finances. And mom is stuck in the middle. Mom and the kids are at the class telling us the story. And mom is stuck in the middle. And he won't give up control because he doesn't think there's a problem. So <laughs> the solution to all of this is mapping out a comprehensive 30-year retirement plan. Now, every one of you listening probably thinks you have a plan. You went to an advisor, you went to someone, and they put together a, you know, an e-money or Money Guide Pro or some software that spits out you know, your probability of whether you're going to outlive your money or not. That is not a plan. A plan is going to map. In fact, if you want to see a plan, go to the website and watch the 30-minute webinar as we walk through a comprehensive retirement plan, and that's what we teach in the class. We teach you how to do a 30-year comprehensive retirement plan, which includes when do I take income, from which accounts, at which registrations, when do I take my Social Security, do I take my pension or my lump sum, how do I minimize my taxes by filling brackets, not bumping brackets, when do I recognize my capital gains, how do I minimize my taxations or eliminate, in many cases, taxes on capital gains and dividends? 
how do I protect my surviving spouse? The plan that we walk through in the class is an example of saving five to $600,000 in taxes over your lifetime. It was a person who retired with $2 million saved. We're 65 years old, and the plan is able to create $160,000 a year of cash flow with a zero chance of outliving their income. It's a bulletproof plan for long-term care, recessions, from major market events, from outliving income protecting the surviving spouse, and it maps out what happens if one of them predeceases the other versus the other. It maps out everything. That plan takes CFPs, CPAs, and attorneys. It takes them 50 to 60 hours to build that plan. That is what is the solution to this. You have to map it out and know what's going to happen in the future from a financial perspective, a, a roadmap to follow even if one of the spouses dies, so that no one can take advantage of you as you age. We also teach, Paul, in this class, it's a very important piece of this. How do you choose an advisor? How do you do a background check? How do they get paid? What should you pay? What specific questions you should ask to identify is the person that's trying to help you, are they qualified to really build this comprehensive retirement plan? Or are they a one-size-fits-all financial advisor that's helping 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, or are they just focused on retirement and real retirement planning, not software-generated, 30-minute cookie-cutter, one-size-fits-all solutions? Paul, I know I talked a lot. Sorry. No, no, I, it, it, was, it was awesome. You know, I, the course is incredibly powerful for anyone coming, right? Everybody needs this course. Men, women, both need, need a plan, need to understand, need to become educated. But I would say this, and I'd be speaking to the men who are listening today, even if you don't think you need it. You do. You need it. Trust me. I know you don't think you're overly confident, but I'm telling you, even if you don't think you need to learn, to get educated, if you don't think you need a plan because you think you can do it yourself, come to the class for your wife. Come for her. Because at the end of the day, she's going to need it when you pass away. So... Attend one of these eight-hour classes that are taught at major universities. We're also streaming live from the universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. And look, attend the class. I'll make this guarantee. We'll make the charity makes this guarantee. If you don't feel better prepared for retirement after this course, we'll make a $1,000 donation to whatever charity you want. That's how convinced we are. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.